So let's look at uh, elliptic curve points within finite fields. So we use this within elliptic curve cryptography and we'll try and understand how the points are actually created uh, within our elliptic curve cryptography. Okay, so elliptic curve looks a little bit like this when, when we plot it. So a typical curve is equal to uh, y y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b. Okay, and then when we plot our x, y, we end up with something that looks like that. And then with elliptic curve cryptography, we take a point on the elliptic curve and we create a gradient and then we multiply that point by uh, the gradient, which is typically our private key, and we end up with our public key, which is an xy point. Okay, so this is a typical one here. We see we have 256-bit private key. It's a random number to create our private key. We then have a public key. Have a look here. We can see we have an xy point. And the g value is a point on the curve that we will use again we have uh, a point. So this is the x value and this is the y value. So that's how the equation works. And normally we'd plot like that. But within cryptography, we work within what's called a finite field. With a finite field, we take a prime number p and we make sure that all our operations are done mod p. Mod is the, is the remainder from a division between integers. So the two main things here is that we're dealing with integers and also we're dealing with mod p. So we can't just take our normal curve that we, that we get because we will only plot within integers. That's what we do with inside our elliptic curve cryptography. So here's uh, an example of uh, the parameters that we get. So there are various elliptic curves that we can actually use. And here is one here. So we can see here that the A value is 0 <coughs> and the B value is 7. So in this case, our elliptic curve <coughs> is this. Then we take our P value, which is our prime, and we make it mod of that prime. So that defines the maximum value that we can have. The security of our elliptic curve method will be defined uh, basically through the size of that prime number. This is a method here that's used within uh, Bitcoin and, uh, and many blockchain applications. We can also have a G value and the G value is our base point that we would use on our elliptic curve. Okay, so these are standard curves that we use, typically defined as P, A, B, G, N, and H. The core parameters are the P, the A, and the B that we're actually going to have a look at. So what does this look like? So let's take a curve, and the curve in this case is defined by that equation. But as we saw before, we also do a mod P, and in this case, we'll take a prime number of 3, 38,047. <coughs> but when we actually plot that, if we start from 1, then uh, our first point appears at 83,33. Then the next one here, next one, next one. And we end up with this pattern here. And this is what makes our elliptic curve cryptography so secure. <coughs> <coughs> and that we end up with uh, this type of uh, pattern. So we'll have a quick look to see what that looks like. Okay, so we'll take a prime number and we'll take this prime number here. And we have y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 with this prime number. And we end up with these values here. So that defines the x value. 
and the y value that, that we have. Okay, so the y value comes from taking the square root of x cubed plus 7. And the reason that we have these big gaps between the values is that we need to produce an, an integer value from <coughs> the square root of the y value. <coughs> okay, so there's our real uh, elliptic curve that we have. And we take x cubed plus ax plus b mod p is equal to y squared. So these are some standard uh, elliptic curves that we get. NIST defined these ones. Uh, P192, 224, 256, 384, and 511. And we can see here, each of them has a prime number that's equal to the size of this number here. So there's our prime, which is 2 to the power of 224 minus 2 to the power of 96 plus 1, and so on. So you can see the prime becomes larger each time, and it becomes more secure. We then have an A and a B value. So these are very carefully selected so that uh, we can have the maximum security and good performance. Another two typical curves that are used are curve 25519 and the sept 2561k here. Okay, so this is the, the values that uh, that we actually uh, get. So we run, when we run it off one curve, such as this one, here are the parameters that we're going to use, and here are the points. So the good thing is that uh, we get quite a lot of points that we can actually <coughs> use, which means that it's, it's uh, more... It's, uh, it's a fairly secure method. <coughs> Typically, 120, 160 bits is equal to a 128-bit uh, symmetric key encryption because we can see we have gaps in here that uh, reduce the number of total points that we can actually have. So the way that we actually determine if we have a point that's possible is we'll take this value here and we'll obviously apply it into there and then we do our mod of our prime number which is this one here and we end up with a value which will be equal to the y squared. To be able to determine if we have a, a root or what's called a quadratic residue we use this method here. <coughs> and this method here returns a 1 if we have what's called the square root modulo p. And if that is true, then it means that we have a value which uh, has a root, which is an integer value. Once we have that value, then we can use a modulo square root function such as this one here to be able to calculate what the actual value of y is <coughs> in this case here are the different values of y that, that we get so we should be able to have a look at that here okay so we'll take uh, a curve so let's say we'll take p224 and here are the points that we get so the first one starting at is 5 8 12 and so on so the code that we're using is to be able to initially uh, determine if we've found uh, a, 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 a modulo uh, value if we were able to find a square root modulo p 
value, uh, we find the value for a. <coughs> and if we do, then we can then take the square root, the modulo square root, to find uh, the result. Okay, so this code here allows us to be able to find out the first few points for different elliptic curve values. So there's the elliptic curve method here. And the thing about this is that <coughs> if we change just one little bit of any of these parameters, we'll actually find that we don't end up with a solution which is <coughs> fast and which also has many uh, uh, gaps in between the points. This will reduce the security of the method. Okay, so that's been a quick overview of elliptic curve points within finite fields.